Why Greenland is an island and Australia is a continent. Welcome back, curious minds. There is nothing wrong with being curious, and most times satisfying that curiosity is the only way to achieve inner peace. Today we are exploring two extraordinary landmasses, Greenland, the world's largest island, and Australia, the smallest continent in the world. For years, some thoughts have been on the geological and geographical factors that classify Greenland as an island and Australia as a continent. And this fascinating and enthralling discussion is not about to end. You're involved today and it's going as engaging as it usually is. Get ready for an enlightening journey filled with captivating facts and compelling evidence. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Please don't forget to share your thoughts on this later. A closer look at Greenland. We begin our journey in the Arctic wonderland of Greenland, a vast expanse of ice and rock that stretches over 2.1 million square kilometers. While Greenland may evoke images of a massive landmass, it's indeed classified as an island. But what defines Greenland as an island? To understand this, we need to examine the key factors that determine the classification of landmasses. We were taught as kids that an island is a landmass that is surrounded by water. However, there's one more criterion that must be satisfied for a typical landmass to be classified as an island. Geologically speaking, an island is defined as a landmass surrounded by water and not directly connected to any larger landmass. This differentiation is crucial in understanding why Greenland is considered an island. Despite its colossal size, Greenland is an independent landmass that is entirely separate from the North American continent. It's surrounded by the Arctic Ocean to the north, the Greenland Sea to the east, the Labrador Sea to the south, and the Davis Strait to the west. This isolation from any other significant landmass solidifies Greenland's status and classification as an island. Another major reason why Greenland is classified as an island is its immense ice sheet, covering approximately 80% of the land. This gigantic ice sheet is the second largest in the world, surpassed only by Antarctica. These glaciers play a vital role in defining Greenland as an island rather than a continent. They act as natural barriers, physically separating Greenland from neighboring landmasses. This distinct separation is a key factor in the classification of Greenland as an island. A closer look at Australia. Now let's shift our focus to the vast continent of Australia, a land of diverse ecosystems, breathtaking landscapes and unique wildlife. Australia is considered a continent rather than an island despite its continental scale. So what makes Australia, even though surrounded by water, a continent different from Greenland, a known island? It's time for some investigative journalism. One of the major factors that define Australia as a continent is its position on tectonic plates. Australia sits on its own tectonic plate, aptly named the Australian Plate. This giant chunk of Earth's crust encompasses not only the continent of Australia, but also portions of the Indian Ocean, including the island of Tasmania and other smaller islands. This significant landmass, situated on a separate tectonic plate, contributes to Australia's classification as a continent instead of just an island. A second reason why Australia is considered a continent and not an island is geographic boundaries. Unlike Greenland, which is surrounded by distinct bodies of water, Australia shares no land borders with other continents. Now that's amazing, isn't it? Australia is the only continent that occupies a single country, making it a unique and independent landmass. This geographical separation further solidifies Australia's status as a continent. Another compelling aspect that reinforces Australia's continent classification is its remarkable biodiversity. Australia boasts an astonishing array of unique vegetation and wildlife, including iconic species such as kangaroos, koalas and the Great Barrier Reef. This distinct and diverse ecosystem, found only on the continent, provides further evidence to support Australia's classification as a continent. A third reason beyond the geological and geographical aspects is Australia's cultural significance. The continent holds deep cultural connections for its indigenous population, who have inhabited the land for tens of thousands of years. The rich history, traditions and diverse Aboriginal cultures within Australia further highlight its distinct continental identity and further seals its status as a continent. Comparison of Greenland and Australia 
let's now do a bit of revision of what we've considered so far. When comparing Greenland and Australia, we can see clear differences in their geological, geographical and cultural attributes that shape their classifications. While Greenland's isolation, distinct separation from other land masses and massive ice sheet classify it as an island, Australia's unique tectonic plate, geographic boundaries, biodiversity and cultural significance define it as a continent. Nevertheless, both showcase the incredible diversity and complexity of our planet's landforms. These two unique places offer us a glimpse into the fascinating world of geology, geography and cultural heritage. So whether you're exploring the icy wonders of Greenland or immersing yourself in the vast landscapes of Australia, be prepared to be captivated by the stories these remarkable landmasses hold. They say size matters, right? Well, Australia takes the cake on this one. It's almost four times larger than Greenland. It's like comparing a giant to a tiny speck on the map. Now picture this. If these two landmasses were a bit closer in size, Greenland might have had a stronger case for being considered a continent, while Australia could have been classified as an island. But hey, that's not the reality we're dealing with here. The sheer magnitude of the difference between the two is what draws the line. Just imagine the vastness of Australia with its expansive landscapes, diverse ecosystems and iconic landmarks. It's a whole world in itself. On the other hand, Greenland, although undeniably stunning, can't compete when it comes to sheer size. So size truly plays a significant role in determining the status of these two special landmasses. Australia stands tall as a continent, while Greenland remains a magnificent island. Population Comparison Let's now talk about another striking tiebreaker – population. It's no secret that both Australia and Greenland have vast discrepancies in the number of people calling them home. Australia boasts a whopping 26 million people, ranking it as the 55th most populous nation worldwide. On the flip side, Greenland has just 57,000 residents, putting it at a modest 205th place in the global population chart. That's quite some difference, wouldn't you agree? Now, hold on a second before we jump to conclusions. If population alone determined continental status, we'd have to reconsider Antarctica's classification as a continent too. So it's not the sole deciding factor, but it does shed light on the diverse human landscapes of these two captivating places. Let's talk about the similarities between Australia and Greenland in terms of landscape. Both countries share a common pattern when it comes to human habitation. The majority of people in both nations tend to reside along the coast. It makes sense when you consider the challenging terrains that dominate these lands. In Greenland, it's the icy barrier of the massive ice cap, while in Australia, it's the vast expanse of desert. These natural features make large portions of the interior areas inhospitable. You might want to take a moment to visualize these incredible lands. Australia, nestled in the South Pacific, is an enormous island stretching over a mind-boggling that's roughly 3 million square miles. It proudly claims the sixth spot on the list of the world's largest countries. On the other hand, Greenland sits gracefully between the Arctic Ocean and the North Atlantic Ocean, encompassing a landmass of just about 834,000 square miles. With that size, it stands as the 12th largest country in the world. Autonomy Next, although not a defining factor, let's take a look at each nation's autonomy and self-governance starting with Greenland. Greenland is an autonomous territory within Denmark. While it enjoys a certain degree of self-governance, Denmark still handles matters such as defence and foreign affairs on behalf of Greenland. However, Greenland has been granted more control over its internal affairs in recent years, including managing its natural resources and developing its own legislation. So we can say that Greenland has a significant level of autonomy, but is not entirely independent from Denmark. Now let's shift our focus to Australia. Australia is a sovereign country. It has its own government and legal system and controls most aspects of its internal affairs. Australia has the power to make decisions on matters like defence, foreign policy and economic management. It maintains diplomatic relations with other countries, represents itself in international organisations and has the ability to negotiate trade agreements independently. So in terms of independence, Australia stands as a more self-governing and autonomous nation compared to Greenland. Please leave us a comment below and let's know your thoughts on these unique landmasses. 
Until next time, keep exploring, stay curious, and keep uncovering the wonders of our planet. Thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell.